Welcome to the second webcast for SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. My name is Justin Burton and today I'm going to focus on the item-centric approach to PDM. Before I start, I'll recap on some of what was covered in the previous webcast. SOLIDWORKS is used by many industries by thousands of companies, from machinery and plant design to product design and medical. No matter what the industry, there are common challenges that all companies face. They want their products to be differentiated and innovative. They want to be first to market to get ahead of their competition. This needs to be at the lowest cost to maximise the return on investment. But the product must maintain quality and reliability is also key. SOLIDWORKS provides proven products to help all of our customers design better products. In the design cycle there are other challenges that also are common to many companies. Getting to market faster and reducing product costs can be hindered by poor data management. Whether it's a SOLIDWORKS part, assembly or drawing, or any other design document like email, spreadsheets or even other CAD data, it is essential that these are managed efficiently throughout the design process. SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM was built on Windows Explorer, making it easy to use and familiar to any user. Security can be given to allow access only to the right person at the appropriate stage of the cycle. Powerful search tools allow you to quickly find and reuse your data. We allow for replication of data across multiple sites making it easy for design teams to work together from different locations around the world. Your current workflow can be captured and implemented. Your data will always then follow the correct sign-up procedures but with automated routing and notifications this process is streamlined adding valuable efficiency to your company's processes. If you have existing ERP or MRP systems, Enterprise PDM can easily be set up to send and receive information. Finally, Enterprise is scalable. It is built on industry standard SQL, so your design teams, whatever their size, can work with great performance. The previous webcast focused on the ease of use, powerful search capabilities, and the workflow with an enterprise. Today, though, we will look at the data connectivity, and in particular, how an item-centric approach can really help link the CAD design to the finished product that is usually managed within your ERP system. Before we look at how we use items, I think it's important to understand what an item is and why we may use them. We will then look at how we go about using them within Enterprise. So what is an item? An item can be a list of things, an item could represent one or many things, it could be a file like a CAD file or a document, or something you don't usually model in CAD like grease or packaging. It is generally the term used within an ERP system to represent all of those things. To understand this, let's look at a graphical view of how files can relate to items. Some parts in your assembly may not have an item associated to it. More than one file may be a single item. A single file may also represent multiple items, such as configurations of a part that maybe has different sizes or is made from different materials. Also, an item can exist without a file. This would normally be something like paint or grease. A reason for this is the need for a product bill of materials, a list that defines the whole product and not just that that is designed in CAD. Take this paint sprayer. The CAD bum shows parts and assemblies and a PCB file which is just one item. But for purchasing and manufacturing needs, there may be need for a different bill of materials. Items like paint and primer are needed, the PCB is purchased in three parts, but the plug is purchased as a whole item. So the item bomb here can be quite different to that of the CAD data. In researching items, it was clear to see that the main customer needs were the ability to combine different data together, author the complete bomb, and tightly integrate with the current ERP procedures. To combine data, you can look at an item as a container. It can contain one or all of the design information for a particular product. Here for item number 201, uh, the CAD data, assembly instructions, analysis results and much more are all conveniently grouped in one container. These grouped items can be used to create the complete product bill of materials. Mechanical items such as purchased or manufactured parts, whether in 2D or 3D, software items like a pre-installed operating system or a CD that's shipped with your product, electrical items or even consumables like glues and paint can all be added to that bill of materials. This can be managed outside of the CAD system 
Different bills of materials can also be put together for different areas of your company, such as purchasing, or maybe manufacturing, or even an assembly team. The item approach is not for every company, but if you need an interface with an ERP system, Enterprise could be your easy to use window to a traditionally cumbersome platform. An Enterprise PDM item is a direct representation of those items in your ERP system. The item structure can be created in PDM and passed directly to the ERP. ERP attributes can easily be made available to engineers. Items are really the means of communication between engineering and manufacturing. Well, let's take a look. Here is the item master view. It's been designed to be very similar to that of the File Explorer, which is basically Windows Explorer. Items are listed here in the main window, and this one represents the electric motor for the paint sprayer. Data cards are automatically filled in directly from the CAD data, meaning definitely no mistakes when transferring from CAD data to items. The bill of materials here shows all the items associated to that top level. In this case, it's quite simply parts within a sub-assembly. Now let's create a new item, one which has no file associated to it. This typically, as an example in manufacturing, would be grease or maybe paint. Here we're going to simply create an example item. We can add a description to make this item more recognisable, as the default number is taken from an item serial number that you can create your own scheme to. Once we've filled in the desired information, we can take our item and using the simple drag and drop interface associate this with any other. In this case we're going to associate it to our magnetic electric motor. Once we check in our item related to this motor assembly we will then see our newly created item within the bill of materials for this top level. The left shows a folder structure giving a simple way to organise our products. Now let's take a look how items are created from CAD geometry. Here is the paint sprayer that we've talked about previously. It has a full data card with information inputted on the SOLIDWORKS assemblies and the bill of materials here shows a full parts list of all the sub-assemblies and components within that assembly. Generating the items is a simple process. Simply right click on the assembly, really like most actions with an enterprise. New item numbers are generated or existing item numbers are used. For an example, the motor assembly already has item numbers that we've looked at, so we can just simply use those. The new item numbers are shown here in the item list, and the next step is simply to say where we want to place and organise the paint sprayer items that we've created. Within the file explorer, we are straight away shown which items are associated to the particular CAD files, making it very easy for anybody working on a design to see which components already have items. Back in the item master and with the item numbers generated for the paint sprayer we can now build our complete product bomb. As you would expect to see, to start with, the items are ordered in the same way as the CAD bill of materials, but any changes made such as the new item we created are also maintained within those sub item levels. Let's take a look at building a bomb for this paint sprayer. To ensure this example is easy to understand we're going to take a simple look at the top level bill of materials for our power painter item. To complete our bill of materials we want to add paint and glue to the bill of materials for this power painter. Here the drag and drop interface allows us very quickly to add these items to the full product definition of our power painter. We also want to add a document. This time it's a PDF file of assembly instructions and also a cleaning manual to be packaged with our final product. To associate this item to the actual cleaning instructions and assembly instructions themselves, we can simply browse our file explorer to find the document An enterprise will associate that now with this item. Again, Using the simple drag and drop process, we can take our newly created item referencing the PDF file and associate it to our Power Painter product definition. Now our Power Painter has a complete bill of materials including our assembly instructions, the glue and also the black paint that we added within this example. 
This bill of materials is now ready to be passed to our ERP system. Like other documents in Enterprise, items also can follow workflow procedures. This means we can actually get our bill of materials checked in an automated process ensuring the BOM is complete and no mistakes are passed to the ERP or MRP system. With our item-centric bill of materials for the power painter ready to be approved, we can summarise the steps we have taken and the benefit of working in this item-centric method. To summarise, a great benefit of Enterprise is a direct creation of items from SOLIDWORKS files and other CAD geometry. It has an easy to use item explorer with a visual bomb and a drag and drop interface allowing us to very easily create our complete product bill of materials and then use this bill of materials to pass to our ERP system. I hope you have found this presentation both interesting and informative and given you an insight into item centric data management and how you could use Enterprise to build your item centric bills of materials to pass to your ERP system. If you do have any questions, please contact your local reseller, visit the SOLIDWORKS website or contact myself directly at justin.burton at 3ds.com. Thank you.